For, what, a hundred years now, we've been staring up at the stars, looking for alien life. But what if we've been looking in completely the wrong direction? Today, we're digging into a pretty radical theory from researcher Jay Alfred that right here on Earth, there's a vast, invisible biosphere made of plasma. We've spent billions of dollars scanning the heavens, listening for signals from other worlds. Well, this theory flips that whole idea on its head. It asks a pretty wild question. What if the aliens we're so desperately looking for aren't light years away, but are right here, coexisting with us in a form we literally can't even see? So this flips the script on the famous SETI program. Instead of a search for extraterrestrial intelligence, the theory proposes something called SETI, a search for interterrestrial intelligence. The thinking here is, maybe we should be looking for a second, completely different genesis of life, one that's not based on carbon, that happened right here on our own planet creating a hidden biosphere that silently surrounds us. All right, so this leads us to the core of the whole thing, the case for life. But life based not on carbon and water, but on plasma. So what exactly is plasma? Well, think of it as the fourth state of matter. You've got solids, liquids, and gases, right? But if you just keep cranking up the heat on a gas, its atoms literally break apart into this supercharged sea of particles and this isn't some exotic, rare thing. Nope. It's the most common state of matter in the cosmos. It makes up over 99% of the visible universe. Our sun, all the stars, the space between the planets. It's pretty much all plasma. And you know, this idea isn't as out there as you might think. Decades ago, the physicist David Bohm, a guy who worked with Einstein, by the way, was just floored by what he saw plasmas doing in his lab. He watched it organize itself, protect its own interior, and even regenerate acting almost like a living thing. It led him to make a pretty famous admission. He often felt that the electron C was alive. Okay, so if plasma can act like it's alive, could it have the fundamental building blocks, the actual blueprint for life? Let's take a look at what's being proposed. For any kind of life to get started, you need a container, right? Something to separate what's inside from what's outside. Biological life uses a cell membrane, and according to this theory, plasma does something that's, well, it's weirdly similar. It naturally forms something called a double layer sheath, which acts like a protective wall, shielding its insides from the environment. That's a huge first step towards a living cell. But a cell wall isn't enough. You need a way to pass on information. You need genetics. And this is where things get really, really wild. Computer simulations show that these charged particles in plasma can, all on their own, start linking up into these long, stringy filaments. And then those filaments twist themselves into stable helical structures. And the theory goes, these could be a kind of plasma DNA, capable of copying themselves, storing information, and, you guessed it, evolving. So it all sounds pretty neat, doesn't it? You've got a plasma cell wall, you've got plasma DNA, but hold on, there is a huge, huge problem, a massive roadblock known as the instability problem. So here's the deal. The regular plasma that we see all over the universe, it's just unbelievably chaotic. We're talking extreme turbulence, these violent sudden instabilities. Any of those delicate little plasma DNA strands that tried to form would just be ripped to shreds in a split second. It's simply way too violent of an environment for the kind of stability that evolution needs. The bottom line is, trying to get life going in ordinary plasma, it's like trying to build a sandcastle in the middle of a hurricane. It's just not going to happen. And for a long, long time, that was pretty much the end of the road for this whole idea. Or was it? This is where the theory takes a really wild, absolutely mind-bending turn. It brings in a solution from one of the single biggest mysteries in all of physics, dark matter. So, if ordinary plasma is just way too chaotic, it begs the question, where could you find a stable form of plasma? Where could these strange life forms get a nice, calm, cosmic nursery to evolve over billions of years? The proposed answer is in something called dark plasma. Now, this isn't just plasma that's in a dark room. No, this would be a plasma made entirely of dark matter particles. You know, that invisible stuff that makes up something like 85% of all the matter in the universe, but doesn't really interact with us or light at all. And listen, this isn't just one researcher's idea floating out there. I mean, you've got top-tier physicists like Lisa Randall from Harvard who have seriously considered this. She speculated that if certain kinds of dark matter can interact with itself, it could form a whole dark sector of the universe. Dark stars, dark planets, and, in her words, might even allow the existence of dark life. 
So what's the magic ingredient? What makes dark plasma the perfect cradle for life? Well, it all boils down to one critical difference, a weaker electric force. In our regular plasma, that strong force is what creates all the chaos, but a much weaker force in dark plasma would basically calm everything down. It would suppress all those violent outbursts, creating this incredibly stable, calm medium where complex structures could actually form and stick around for eons. Okay, so let's follow this train of thought all the way to the end. If this stable dark plasma is real and it's gravitationally stuck to our own planet, what does that actually mean? It would mean we are living on and inside a dark Earth. And the sheer scale of this invisible world, it's almost impossible to wrap your head around. The theory suggests this dark Earth, this giant sphere of dark plasma that's intermingled with our own world, could have a biosphere with a volume, get this, 1,000 times bigger than our entire planet. I mean, look at this. It really puts our whole existence in a new light, doesn't it? The entire space that we, carbon-based life, take up, from the deepest ocean trench to the top of the atmosphere, it's just a paper-thin layer on the surface. But this theoretical dark plasma biosphere, it would be a vast, planet-sized ocean of potential life. In that scenario, we're the ones living in a tiny little isolated corner of reality. So what would these creatures even be like? The theory sketches out a really bizarre image. Giant, single-celled organisms just floating around in a dark plasma ocean. They wouldn't have a central brain, so maybe they feel their surroundings from all directions at once. And get this, instead of growing old and dying, they might be functionally immortal, just splitting in two and replicating themselves forever. And all of this, it leads to one final, really humbling idea that just turns our whole worldview completely upside down. You know, we spent all this time and energy searching the stars for life, always assuming that we are the main event. But what if we're not? What if we're the weird ones? What if the most common, most dominant form of life on our own planet is an invisible, silent intelligence, thriving in a vast plasma world we can't even see? 